It's my pleasure to present a case that uh, Dr. Glazer, Barry Glazer, has been kind enough to share with me about how to address the severely retroclined incisors and deep overbite treatment with Invisalign appliance. And what I did, I looked at the biomechanical approach that was used and how it was successful in treating this. The objectives of this presentation is to, are to study the effect of Invisalign. And Invisalign doesn't have a great reputation to be able to torque teeth or until recently. But there are a lot of references that seem to point towards having a much better success rate. What happened in this case at the center rotation level. So these are the references and there are many of them. I, I selected about 20, I think, or looking at the class two division two treatments approaches and also looking at the way you can use the Invisalign appliance to help address the torquing, specific torquing issues to the class two division two. So that's the case. The main idea is, in this case, you can argue it's not really a class two division two, but the teeth are really, really retroclined. This is the occlusal plane, cases that are pretty difficult to address in a, even in a full orthodontic bracket approach. This is the cephalometric tracing. And that's after. These teeth have to be uprighted. They have to be somewhat intruded in space and in time. And these ones may afford to come forward a little bit. And obviously, we have to correct the class two molar relationship. That was the treatment finalized. The teeth have been uprighted, reangulated. The bite has been opened. The low incisors have been slightly proclined. And the molar classification is now class one. So, what happened on the left side? We see the before in red and the after in green. This patient also has shown some growth. He was at the late eight stages of growth, but we still had some growth, which helped a lot in the class two correction. And this is what happened at the upper incisor level. The growth pattern is right here. And the incisors have moved more labially with a bit of proclination. And also the, the bite has opened due to growth and very little, actually very little intrusion of the upper incisors. As you can see, everything was done with growth and control of the mechanics. So this is what really happened in theory at the before and after the incisal edges of the incisors moved down and forward. There was also a significant amount of movement from the apex towards the lingual. And this is my explanation of the case. So I started with this drawing that Dr. Glazer uh, got me from the superimpositions. And in red, you have the before and in green, the after superimposed as best as possible on the maxilla. So now if we go towards the standard conventional way of treating the class two division twos, we would say, okay, let's put a simple force right here to push or if you use brackets, you could use a simple force to pull the crown of the tooth, create a class two division one from a class two division two. What you get at this level now is the center rotation of a movement of uncontrolled tipping on the red tooth right here is about at this level. The center resistance is here and it moved to here. So what happens is the center rotation define the movement of the incisal tip, which would be displaced around this circle. And what happened is you would get this situation where the tooth would be between the green tooth and the blue tooth, that the blue tooth would be the maximum amount of uncontrolled tipping. And you can see that the angulation is the same between the blue tooth and the green tooth, the green tooth being the uh, end result. But what you have also is definitely the position of the incisal tip is much less. And you may have noticed in your treatments that many times you have a lot of overjet after you have transformed your class two division twos into a class one with uncontrolled tipping. So what really happened in this case, and again, we have to take into control that this is not in perfectly precise because there was growth. There was a lot of movement and this is just before and after. So there has been some changes during treatment that were addressed by the Invisalign and Dr. Glazer by doing refinements. This tooth, if we take the, the movement just before, that's the before, that's the after. Obviously, this rotation took place on this circle, which 
So what we have here where the center rotation has been determined by drawing vertical lines from two points, from bisecting a line that connects two points on at the apex of this example and here. And what happens, this is what the, the tooth is actually doing, is rotating around this, this point. Here. All these circles use the same center ro rotation. They have obviously different diameters and that's what explains that these three points are not moving at the same time and at the same rate. They are moving, they're displacing in space, but they're also rotating. So this is the center rotation, as I said. And you can see the displacement from CR1 to CR2, which is on this line. So this is the simple force direction, F, which is right here. And now we have a distance from the center rotation to F that gives us a distance. So the distance now, what will happen is a moment will be created and a simple force and the combination of the moment and the force will result in the displacement and the rotation of the tooth at CR1 towards CR2. In this case, we determine that the distance from center rotation to the uh, line of force or the line that goes through CR2, CR1 and CR2 is 10 millimeters. We use a table that was de first developed by Dr. Burstone and then kind of simplified by Dr. Fioretti and Melson. And if we see that this, two, this distance from CR to the center resistance, from center rotation to the center resistance is about 10 millimeters and the tooth is roughly 17 or 18 millimeters, we have a, a corresponding value of the moment to force ratio of eight. What we know now is the moment to force ratio between F and this moment is equal to eight. Or if you could apply a force right here at eight millimeters away from the line of action of the force at CR1, you would get to CR2. That the center rotation will change during movement. So this is just an approximation. But the main important aspect of these findings is that if you just apply uncontrolled tipping to the, you will get the right angulation, but you may end up increasing the overjet too much. And you we may have noticed that, and then it becomes very complicated. In this situation here, what Dr. Glazer has done with Invisalign and the treatment is by controlling the moment to force ratio and maintaining it at eight, or at least around eight, what has happened is the tooth has rotated using obviously the moment and the force has translated the tooth where it's supposed to go and the amount of overjet was controlled. Here what I do on the right side is I retraced slightly different maxillas, the red being the before, the green after. And what I, I obtained here is the center or rotation is not exactly the same as the one that we had before, but it stays in the same area and you have the same type of movement. The center rotation for uncontrolled tipping would be here and that's not really the best position. You go to infinity, you would get uh, translation. And if you were right at the center, which sometimes we also do, we get right at the center of resistance. So meaning the center of rotation equals the center of resistance. And then what you get, you get only a moment and you do, you do not get the, the translation, which you may want to get in some cases. So it's up to you on getting exactly the moment to force ratio that you need for this type of movement. Let's try to illustrate the three different center rotations we have calculated. So the first one was for uncontrolled tipping, which is slightly about a third of the apical part of the root. And when you have the center rotation at this level, this is the movement you can get. And if you put the axis about 20 degrees for the tooth, that's the amount of overjet you create. If you now take the center rotation down to the first level, slightly lower, and test again, you will get more overjet. You will get over, you will get some overjet, and if you go to 20 degrees, you can see that you get some overjet and the tooth is rotating around this axis. And obviously the other teeth will change angulation and orientation with growth and the rest of treatment. And if you now push the, as I traced after the center rotation lower here, you will get 
a much different perspective. But you go to 20 degrees roughly, where is 20 degrees? Right here, 20 degrees. And then you look at the rest of the treatment and you get a very good result. If you do the same with the sun rotation slightly higher, again, as I said before, you will get this movement, 19, but you need this very, very significant amount of growth to be able to correct the position of the incisor so you may end up not being able to achieve what you're looking for, which happens many times where you have not enough amount of growth to correct this very significant overjet that you've created. Thank you. The importance of controlling the position of the center rotation. Remember that it varies throughout the treatment, but the Invisalign system seems to be capable of controlling this position. If you look at the case that Dr. Glazer has so generously contributed to, and remember these are approximate. Every time the patient comes in, you need to change. If you use fixed orthodontics, you need to change the, I would say, the force system to adapt the side ro uh, rotation to the new vision of what you have of the man occlusion. But with Invisalign, you can pre-plan the center of rotation position, rotate the teeth, but you will probably need refinements on this very complicated man occlusion. So I thank Dr. Glazer for his contribution and I hope that you enjoyed the lecture. Again, this is not a perfect treatment uh, explanation because we have before and after, but it gives us an idea of avoiding probably the uncontrolled tipping motion that we sometimes use with a straight wire approach or just pushing the teeth with Invisalign and applying as much correct torque or apply the right moment to force ratio to the malocclusion that is actually studied. Thank you.